Out of curiosity, why did you choose to click on this video and watch it? In general, how do you feel about public speaking? Do you get nervous? What's the best speech you've ever delivered? And what was the reaction like from the audience? What I'm doing right now may not seem like it, but it is one of the key ingredients to having a successful one-on-one -on -one conversation. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why it's so important to ask questions when communicating to somebody on a one-to-one -one basis. Hey everyone, my name is Wade Patterson and my YouTube channel is about becoming a better communicator and we're talking about communication of all sorts. In this video, I'm talking about one-to-one -one communication, but in most of my videos, I talk about public speaking, speaking to a bigger audience, but I've also created other pieces of video content as well, such as, speaking of video content, how to create video content and get over that initial fear. So what I'm trying to say is that my YouTube channel covers a lot of areas with the ultimate goal of making you a more impactful communicator. And if that is something you care about, which I think you should care about it because communication is so incredibly important. So if it is, please subscribe to my channel. My goal is to create as many great videos as possible to keep you informed, give you fresh ideas, and keep you at the top of your communication game. And by subscribing to my channel, you will hopefully never miss one of those videos. In 2017, there was a Harvard research study that I came across, and it was fascinating because it talked about the importance of asking questions in conversations. And I may be butchering the specifics of this study, but if, as far as I recall it, there were a few different test groups. And in the first test group, participants were engaging in a conversation. They were that control group. And the group B, who was communicating with them, Group B was asked in the first group to ask as many questions as possible to their conversation partners. In the second group, Group B, the people talking to the others, who are Group A, the test group, were asked to kind of bounce it back and forth. So to ask some questions, but then also talk about themselves on somewhat of a 50-50 basis. And then in the third group, Group B was asked to not really ask many questions, just talk mostly about themselves, keep that conversation flowing, but from their own perspective. And this research happened, and it was done in many forms, but what ultimately was found was that the first group, the people who were asking questions to their conversation partners, were significantly rated as more enjoyable conversations than the other groups that participated. And this actually shouldn't be that surprising because if we think about it in life, we've all got a million things going on in our head. Our worlds are so busy and we've all got our own dreams, our own goals, our own challenges, our own problems. And we're quick to tell others about those things that we're experiencing, but what's a bit more rare is when somebody takes a genuine interest in, in our world, in our experiences, and really asks good questions that gives us the opportunity to, to share those things that we care about. And the fact that they are listening intently, it is enjoyable. It's nice. It's a good feeling as though this person really cares and that they are willing to hear about all of the things I'm experiencing. Now this study went a step further and actually had a speed dating element to it. And for all of you single viewers out there, it found that those people on speed dates who asked more questions were more likely to secure a second date than the other test groups who didn't. So hey, on this channel, I talk about improving your communication skills for business and personal purposes. This really is a personal purpose. Some of you may get a date thanks to this video or a better chance at a partner, so you're welcome in advance. So how do we ensure that we're asking a lot of questions in conversations, one-on-one -on -one conversations that we're having? The first tip is to bite that habit or fight that habit that we always want to 
think about what we're going to say next. This is something that's incredibly common. When you're in a conversation and a topic comes up, often we have a story that relates and we have that, that urge to want to tell our story or our perspective. And that can be fine and that might be completely relevant. But if we're able to park that to the side and really listen, listen intently, that is the biggest key to this video is the ability to listen. Listen intently to what our conversation partner is saying and listen with the point of asking more questions and learning more about the situation. And once you get in the habit of doing this, it becomes incredibly natural and normal to start to think of what types of questions to ask next. For example, if I'm talking to somebody named Mary about a summer vacation that she went on, and Mary tells me, yeah, I went there with um, a bunch of my cousins who I don't see very often, and we all stayed at a cabin, and yeah, it was just a lot of fun. It was a great way to spend an August weekend. In that little piece of information I've gotten from Mary, there's a lot of things I could be thinking about. The first is, okay, she's mentioned that she doesn't see these cousins very often. Where are the cousins based? How many cousins were there? How old are the cousins? Why don't you see them that often? Is there a family dynamic or is it just distance? You can start to really learn more about the situations and every answer Mary gives, I promise you, is going to open up more potential questions. We could talk about where they were vacationing. We could talk about what types of activities they did while on vacation. Did she have to take off work time for that? Speaking of work time, does her job, is it pretty flexible? Does it allow her to take as many vacation days as she wants in the year? Is she limited to four weeks? There are endless threads where if we're paying attention, we can really start to pick out these things and ask more questions. And what will happen naturally is Mary is going to enjoy the conversation because, and this is the key, we're actually interested. So this video is going to be useless if you go into conversations and you just are asking questions for the point of asking questions. No, of course you have to take an actual interest in what the person's saying, but you'll really start to tap into their passions and what they care about because the more questions you ask, the more little hints and clues they're going to voluntarily give you. And that's what it's all about in terms of getting to know somebody on a deeper level. It's incredibly important, again, to, to have a great successful conversation to ask a lot of questions. And if you're being asked questions back about yourself and your perspective, of course, by all means, talk about whatever it is that you're being asked about, but then always keep an eye on the opportunity. So if you feel like the other person's only asking you questions and you're not getting to know them, try to throw it back every now and then. If I'm in a conversation talking about how I love the sport of volleyball and they're asking me questions like, oh, do you play on a team? Do you play in the summer or the spring or the fall? What seasons do you play volleyball in? What position do you play? Where in your city do you play at? They're asking me all these questions. I can answer them, but then at some point, throw it back to the other person. How about you? Do you play volleyball? What sports do you play? How long have you played that in your life? And you start to ask them those questions as well. So it should be this, this feeling of genuine interest for the person that you're talking to. A couple years ago, I created a speech or a presentation and it was all about impactful communication, surprise, surprise. And I had different challenges in that speech. And I'm going to share one of those challenges with you. I called it the Voltaire Challenge. Why did I call it that? Because Voltaire has this famous quote, judge a man by his questions rather than by his answers. And the Voltaire challenge was for you, the audience member, to try and ask more questions in every conversation you're in than your conversation partner. And of course, you don't need to count every single question, but you should come out of those conversations feeling like you really asked a lot of great questions and got to learn a lot about the person you were chatting with. And this challenge, I think, is, is such an important one. And I know this video has been a little different than most of the videos I put out on my channel, but I don't want to minimize the importance of the topic I'm talking about because I really think this idea of being intentional in one-on-one -on -one 
conversations, which is something most people don't think they need to practice one-on-one conversations. We think about practicing public speaking, but we chat to so many people so often. Why would we have to change that? But I really think that if you analyze the conversations you're having on a daily basis and ask yourself whether you're asking others as many questions as you could be, it could be a game changer for you just in terms of how people enjoy interacting with you, how they feel coming out of those conversations. So take it for what it's worth, but I really think one of the keys to being a great conversationalist is asking a lot of questions. I know this video was a bit different than some of my others, but for those of you who stuck along this long and watched it through its entirety, Thank you so much for doing so. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Or if you know somebody else who's super selfish in conversations and never asks you a question, send them this video. Tell them that they should learn how to become a better conversationalist. Maybe you have to do so in a subtle way, but feel free to share my content with anyone you think could benefit from these videos. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. Have an amazing day. People are more scared of public speaking than they are of dying. Is it just me or is that wrong? Hey everyone, my name is Wade Patterson and I am passionate about impactful communication. My YouTube channel has helped hundreds of thousands of people improve their public speaking skills and I am thrilled to release my first ever course, which has taken my decade of learning about how to become a better public speaker and boiled it down to this theme of mastering the five essentials of public speaking. I know for a fact that if you can dial in these five elements and perfect them, you are going to be a phenomenal public speaker, head and shoulders above the rest, just by being aware of these things. By taking the time to digest the information in this course, practice it, and then put it to action through your speeches, you are going to become a better public speaker. As a bonus in this course, I sit down with the world's greatest freestyle rapper, Harry Mack, and one of the greatest keynote speakers in the world, Sean Canungo, and I get their tips firsthand of what makes them incredible at what they do. If you agree that public speaking definitely should not be scarier than dying, sign up for my course, you won't regret it.